Hello. We're now going to graph something very complicated. It is a trig function that looks like this. I have everything spelled out for you as far as definitions that you need to know. Now, these need memorized, of course, but this goes through this A, this B, what this C is, and how to find a period and how to graph it all by hand. So this is kind of going to take a while here, so let's do it. If we go through our... Um, what we need to do. We're going to graph this. We're going to find the amplitude, the frequency, and the period. Let's do these three things first and then try to graph it. All right, so the amplitude will just be the absolute value of 2. So that's our A right there. So it's just the absolute value of 2, which is 2. Boom, done. Our frequency, that's a Q, our frequency is B. So B is 3 right here. That, that right there is the frequency. So our frequency is 3. Now, what is a frequency? So it's the number of full cycles you see between 0 and 2 pi. That's on the x-axis. So I'll show you that in a little bit. Now, let's figure out what the period is, because that's very important, too. The period, P-E-R-I-O-D, equals 2 pi over b. 2 pi over b. So it's going to be 2 pi over 3. So this right here is going to be our period. This is our frequency. This is our amplitude. These three things we need in order to graph. Okay, now let me make a nice exaggerated xy axis here. And I'm going to stick mainly in the a little off. Let me do that a little bit better. It's hard to do with a black background. That's a little better. So I have a lot of space to work with over here. Okay. So our amplitude is 2. That means it's going to go up and our top peak here is going to be a 2 and we'll try to scale that just about eyeballing it there. Well, that looks pretty good. So it's going to go, our waves are going to go up and down too high each time. Um, the frequency. So if I, and I hesitate to even make this, I really do, because if I make a line here and it's 2 pi, um, in fact, for you taking notes right now, don't write that yet, but just, just for the sake of understanding what the period and the frequency is, if this is 2 pi right here, this thing is going to repeat itself three times in the process. So I'm going to erase this, but it's going to go up and down and up. It's two cycles, <laughs> except I didn't go all the way down. And then it's going to stop right there. So that's basically the shape of it. Um, it's period. If you look at it, I wish I wouldn't have erased that now. Do I have a redo button? No, it doesn't work. Uh, let me do it one more time. So let's see if I can do it a little bit better this time. One, two, three right there okay so the frequency is three this means it, it repeats three times and we can see our little divisions here once here once here and then once here it happens three times per um, zero to two pi that's the definition of frequency the period though is the space in one wavelength so it's the amount of time it takes to complete one full cycle so it's from here to here and that position right there is 2 pi over 3 2 pi over 3 that's that point right there this would be two times that and then another time would give you that so let me go back and erase all this all right, I'm just gonna delete this back off here there we go and I'm also going to get rid of that 2 pi. All right, now let's start graphing this thing. Our period is 2 pi over 3. That means if we call that right there 2 pi over 3, that means that this thing is going to, I'm going to air trace this. It's going to go up, down, and back up and hit right there. That's the amount of time it takes to do one cycle. What I want to know is what are what are my divisions going to be between here? You know, if I, I would kind of like to be accurate with my graph, you know, so 
I want to know where it peaks out, where it bottoms out, and where it crosses the x-axis here. So um, let me show you how to do that. What you do, the trick, is to take 2 pi over 3, take the period, and divide it by 4. All right, so we're going to divide this by 4, which is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over 4. Right? Right? That's dividing by 4. If I do 2 pi over 3 times 1 fourth, which is dividing by 4, I will get 2 pi over 12, which reduces to pi over 6. Everybody see that? The 2 and the 12 cancel. I get pi over 6. That means my intervals, because I'll have four intervals, and what I mean by that, I will erase this as well. It will go up, right there will be one, there will be one, there will be one, and there will be the other one. That's one, two, three, four. I want to get those four intervals. So what I'm going to do is this right here, and this is what I always do. So it's pi over 6 plus pi over 6 plus pi over 6 plus pi over 6. Now check this out. My first division is going to be pi over 6. That's going to be my first one. I'll put that about right there. My second one is going to be pi over 6 plus pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 6, which reduces to what? It would be pi over 3. So my next one, the half, well, yeah, right here will be pi over 3. This line here will be um, pi over 6 plus pi over 6 plus pi over 6, which is 3 pi over 6, which reduces to a famous fraction 1 half. And that's, whoops, it's uh, pi over 2. So this is pi over 2. Two. Now check this out. If I do all four of them now, just to prove that that's two pi over three, to make sure my intervals are correct, it would be pi over six plus pi over six four times. It'd be four pi over six, and four pi over six reduces to two pi over three, which is our period. So the key there to getting those intervals is multiplying whatever the period is by four. I make a note of that. So this is 2 pi over 3. Now we can start constructing this thing. We know what our amplitude is. We know what our frequency is. We know what our period is. So this will just come up. And if I can, I'll do this in dramatic red. I'll come up to about right here. All right, and that's my point there. Come down, hit right here. Bottom out at this point. Right about in there. Do that again. Might as well make this look good. Bottom out like right there, and then back up to here, completing my my full cycle. So I got my. That's how you would find your three points, no matter what your frequency is. So when the frequency gets bigger, these intervals get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, thus higher frequencies, you know, sh compressed. These things would get s infinitely smaller if you made that much larger. Um, if you wanted to go all the way out to 2 pi, you certainly could. Now, I'm not going to do that because it would take another 10 minutes to do that, but you could keep dividing these things up down through here by just keep adding pi over 6. So the next one would be whatever 2 pi over 3 plus pi over 6 is. It would be, what, 5 pi over 6. That would be the next one. And then 6 pi over 6. So let, let's just go that far. If we come back to a, like an orangey color here this would be 5 pi over 6 and then this one would be 6 pi over 6 which is which is just pi so that's actually the halfway point of our whole interval from 0 to 2 pi so this would come up let's see it would come up to here and then go back down here and that would be half of the whole cycle there, half of the um, interval from 0 to 2 pi. So it, would, it should then have created one and a half waves at this point because frequency says it creates three waves in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. And so if we half the frequency, one and a half, we can see it should have one and a half, which it does. There's one and there's half of another one. 
I hope that all made sense. There was a lot of stuff there. Watch it again. See you later.